In the previous video, we considered how to discretize a continuous time motion model and how to select the discrete time transition matrix. In this video, we'll instead focus on how to select the discrete time motion noise and in particular, its covariance matrix. Suppose that the continuous time motion model is described by a linear differential equation such that the time derivative of the state is a linear function of the state plus some process noise. Now from the previous video, we know how to discretize the deterministic part of this by preferably finding the exact solution to the differential equation. So in this video, we'll focus on the noise term here, which we haven't discussed that much previously. Now, a very popular and common assumption regarding Q tilde of t is that it's a white Gaussian noise process, which means that it has zero mean and that it's uncorrelated over time. So uncorrelated over time means that if you take the cross covariance between Q tilde at different time instances, so tau1 is not equal to tau2, this cross covariance will be zero. However, if we take the covariance of Q tilde at the same time, so tau1 is equal to tau2, we get something infinite here, because as the cross covariance is assumed to be an impulse function in time. This might look a bit complicated, but it turns out that we are generally not interested in the covariance of Q tilde at a specific time. Instead, for instance, when we want to find the corresponding discrete time covariance matrix that we will look at later, we always encounter Q tilde in an integral, and it turns out that when we consider an integral of Q tilde, this is actually not that complicated. Now, in order to get at least some understanding of the properties of such an integral, let's look at the famous Wiener process. The Wiener process is just that. It's an integral of this type of noise, where the integral is taken from zero to time t. Now, if we look at what the Wiener process is, as you know, an integral, it's just a type of summation. So as we increase t here, we're just summing more and more Gaussian random variables together. Now this is actually analogous to how we generate a random walk. And we can see the Wiener process as the limit of a random walk as we let the sample time go to zero. So if we look at the properties of the Wiener process, it's easy to see that it's zero mean, as it's just a summation of zero mean random variables, so it has to be zero mean. Now the covariance is simply the expected value of wt times wt transpose. And if we plug in the integral expression for wt, we get this expression here. We can think of this as this is a summation of Gaussian random variables, and this is a summation of Gaussian random variables. And whenever tau1 and tau2 are different, the covariance is going to be zero because of this property here. And we can make use of this. Now, an expectation is also a type of integral, so we can switch the orders of the integral, so we move these integrals outside and then the expectation inside. Then we get the expectation of q tilde tau1 times q tilde tau2 transpose. And this is, by definition, the cost covariance here. So this here is the impulse function times q tilde. Now this is actually convenient that this is an impulse function because impulse functions are easy to integrate. So if we integrate this over tau2, we simply get 1 due to this impulse function here. And if we integrate this from 0 to t, we simply get t times q tilde. So the covariance of a Wiener process grows linearly with time, which is perhaps unsurprising as we keep adding more and more independent Gaussian random variables. Now, what I would like you to remember from this introduction is that q tilde is a time-continuous white Gaussian process, which means that it's zero mean and uncorrelated over time. And even though the cross covariance is an impulse function, when we compute the integrals here, we get something which is finite. Additionally, we saw that the covariance of this type of integral is easy to compute. Now, we will use this when we again look at this linear continuous time differential equation, where the noise term here is this white Gaussian noise process. What we seek is the corresponding discrete time motion model that we write on this form here. Now, as the continuous time motion model is linear, then the discrete time motion model will also be linear. And as the continuous time motion noise process is additive white Gaussian, it's reasonable to assume that also the discrete time noise is additive and Gaussian. However, it's not clear how to select the covariance capital Q K1. So the focus of this video is to find a method to do that, which works for any linear continuous time differential equation 
and, if possible, also some of the nonlinear differential equations that we might have. We should note that QK minus 1 is the covariance of the discrete time process noise QK minus 1. But we can also view it as the covariance of XK given XK minus 1. If we know XK minus 1, then the only uncertainty that we have left here is concerning QK minus 1. Similarly, we interpret this as a covariance of X of T plus capital T given X of T in the continuous time model. We will now introduce two methods to select the motion noise covariance in the discrete time motion model. In the first method that we will present here, we would like to make use of the exact solution for linear systems. So here we have a linear differential equation describing the continuous time motion. And if we solve for X of T plus capital T, we get the following expression. Now, to be honest, the previous derivation that we did, we assumed that Q tilde was a constant vector, which we called B, if you remember. However, it's easy to show that this is the actual solution for this system. So if we identify our discrete time model, we have X of T plus capital T, which is XK equal to, we know this to be our transition matrix, AK minus one, and XT is XK minus one. So this integral here has to be our additive noise process, QK minus one. So with this term here, we want to capture the parts of our model that does not depend on X of T. So QK minus one is supposed to represent this integral of our time continuous noise process over our sample interval and weighted with this matrix function here. Now, when we integrate the noise, this matrix here will determine how the noise will spread out in the different state dimensions. We can look at this by calculating the discrete time noise covariance, that is the covariance matrix of QK minus one. We can do this in a similar manner as we did for the Wiener process. So we can write the covariance of QK minus one as capital Q, K minus one, and we can express this as the covariance of X of T plus capital T when we know X of T. So this covariance here is the covariance of this part here because X of T is known. And the covariance of that can be expressed like this. Now this covariance can be expressed like the expectation of this times this transpose. And if we do similar trick as we did before, when we change the order of the integration and the expectation, we get this result here, where we have an integral from zero to capital T of the exponential function of A tilde times tau times Q tilde times this exponential function transpose. We can interpret this as the continuous time noise covariance gets mixed by these matrix functions and integrated over the whole sample interval. Now, this may look a bit complicated, but in many cases, this is actually not too hard to handle. For instance, the elements of these matrices are often polynomials in tau of quite low order. And then we can take the product of these three and compute the integrals of each element in the corresponding matrix. The second technique to select the covariance of the discrete time motion noise is something that I refer to as the modified Euler method. It is essentially the same as the Euler method, but the noise is handled in a slightly more elaborate fashion. In this case, we consider a general nonlinear differential equation, where a tilde here is possibly a nonlinear function of x of t, but it could of course also be linear as well. We can view the Euler method as this approximation. So x dot of tau is approximately a tilde of x of t plus q tilde of t for all tau within the sampling interval. This means that we approximate the time derivative of x as constant in the complete interval that we are interested in. This assumption greatly simplifies our problem and the calculation of x of t plus capital T and gives the following expression. Since the time derivative is assumed to be constant, the prediction of x of t plus capital T is simply the previous state x of t plus t times the time derivative of x at the start of the interval at time t. Now, for the modified Euler method, we use the same approximation for the difficult part, so that's a nonlinear function of x of t, but we use the actual expression for the noise term, since that's anyway turns out to be quite simple to handle. If you look at the expression now, we get x of t plus capital T equal to x of t plus this integral here from t to t plus capital T of the time derivative of x of t. Now this relation holds for any nonlinear or linear system. Now as x dot is approximated to be constant here, when we integrate over the interval, 
of this constant vector, we just get the interval times this constant vector as a result. So there is no difference yet, as we are still using the Euler approximation for this component here. Now here, however, for the noise term, we get an integral over Q tilde from T to T plus capital T, compared to just T times a constant Q tilde of T that we got in the ordinary Euler method. So given this, how should we then select the covariance matrix of the discrete time motion noise? To answer the question, we compute the covariance of x of t plus capital T given x of t. Now, if x of t is known, both of these terms here are deterministic, and we only get a contribution from the noise term. Now, we actually looked at an integral equivalent to this when we looked at the covariance of the Wiener process in the beginning. And then we concluded that the covariance of this grows linearly with the length of the time interval. So, according to the modified Euler method, we should select the discrete time noise as capital T times Q tilde, where Q tilde is the covariance of the continuous time noise process. To summarize what we learned so far, we have proposed two methods for selecting the noise covariance. The first method is designed for linear continuous time systems, and here we select the discrete time covariance by solving this integral here. In the second method, that we refer to as the modified Euler method, we obtain QK minus one by simply multiplying the continuous time covariance Q tilde with capital T. To make this presentation a bit more concrete, let's consider how to select the discrete time motion noise in a constant velocity model. In the continuous time version of the constant velocity model, as we mentioned in the previous video, we assume that there is only noise in the velocity component of the state vector, and that the noise in the position is obtained by integrating the velocity noise. Now it's actually quite common that the motion noise is zero in some of the state variables. So generally we can use a matrix gamma when we express the motion noise Q tilde equal to gamma QC of T, where QC is a low dimensional vector that describes the noise in the dimensions where the noise is non-zero. In the example with the constant velocity model, QC would be the noise in the velocity component. Since Q tilde of T is a linear transformed version of QC of T, the corresponding covariance matrix, capital Q tilde, is related like this. So capital Q tilde is equal to gamma times capital QC times gamma transpose, where capital QC is the covariance of QC of T. By making use of this type of representation, we can express the continuous time constant velocity model like this. As you see, the time derivative of the position is the velocity plus zero noise. And the time derivative of the velocity is QC of T. So QC of T is the noise in the velocity component. To obtain the complete noise covariance, capital Q tilde, we evaluate the product gamma, which is a zero one column vector, times QC, times gamma transpose, which is a zero one row vector, what we then get is this two by two matrix that only contains zeros, except in this element where we get capital QC. To close the video, we have included two self-assessment questions where you will apply the above methods to select the noise covariance in the discrete time constant velocity model.